Our family's catching a flight from our part-time home in the Philippines to the opposite side of Asia, touching down in the city in Emirate of Dubai. Even though this is our first time in the UAE, we're bypassing the obvious tourist traps in search of some Arabian adventure that's more off the beaten path. So we're about to explore Dubai by sea, by air, and by land. Then we're driving 75 miles south to Abu Dhabi to experience some of the most magical parts of UAE culture, from sights and bites to a journey through the world's largest sand desert and a night at one of the most awesome hotels on the planet. We need to get our grab, but more importantly, we need to figure out what terminal we're going to. It is the worst part about the Manila Airport is that the terminals are so stinking far apart, and I feel like they never make it clear what terminal your flight's on. Let's see if I can do a little digging and find out. Terminal three. So, in case you don't know, Grab is like an Uber or Lyft, very popular here in the Philippines, so we're gonna go to terminal three. Okay, driver's almost here already. Grabs here are so much faster than Ubers or Lyft that we've experienced in the U.S. Ah, here he is. Flying on Cebu Airlines, and I am very impressed with the prices that we got round trip from Manila to Dubai non stop for $350 per person. This would have been our first real chance to fly on Emirates Airlines, which we've never done before. Uh, but when you have a family of four, you have to be a little bit more cost conscious than you would otherwise. So that's why we're on Cebu Pacific today. Okay, buddy. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. All set. We're just going through security and getting on the plane. Okay, thank you. Many, many, many hours later, we are in Dubai. It's our 24th country, and it is not our first trip to Asia. We fell in love with Asia and have been back many times but we've never been to a destination like this. It's our first time in the Middle East and we cannot wait to explore it. We've gotta get through customs and get our rental car and get to the hotel and we're going straight to bed. So we're gonna put the camera away and see you in the morning. I never thought I would say this, but thank God for jet lag. It's serving its purpose for us today because we made a four hour time shift backwards. We're up at 4 a.m. this morning, but it feels like 8 a.m., thank goodness. We're waiting for our driver this morning because we're going to go and do something that none of us have ever done before. We're lucky that we get to see the Burj Khalifa in this light because it is so beautiful lit up. It's right there, and if you're not familiar with the Burj Khalifa, it is the tallest building in the world. Yes, but not for long because they're already under construction on a newer building that's going to be probably nearly half a kilometer taller. It might be up to a kilometer and a half tall, which is pretty mind-blowing. Okay. Good morning. We're going to share our ride with two other people, and it's a 40-minute drive, so we'll see you when we get there.
that was goodness. intense having to run and get in the basket really quickly but it was because we had to get in and have that weight distribution to level out the basket and then we quickly just got up in the air and we're gonna be up here cruising around for about 45 God. minutes mm -hmm. and the pilot can't control where we go and so we're just going to we're gonna cruise around up here for roughly 40, 45 minutes, uh, depending on where he thinks a good, safe place for us to land is. Because, I mean, we can end up anywhere, wherever the wind blows us. Do you like it up here, bud? Yes. It's fun. Quiet until the fire goes. <laughs> You probably noticed the haze. That's totally normal for this time of year. As it gets hotter, this haze comes in because of the humidity in the air. So it's harder to see in the summertime. And he says that sometimes in the winter, there might be a few days that you can see all the way to the city. We all the way to the city, which is really far away. Right now we are 3,700 feet in altitude. Ooh. There are a lot of other balloons flying around up here, but we're the highest. And the sun, oh, we turned around. How funny, the sun is over there now. It used to be right behind me. So pretty coming up. There's a landing spot that he picked out right over here, a little gray area. We're headed straight towards it, so if the wind is on our side, we're looking pretty good. It'll be a hard landing. We're getting close to landing, which can be pretty rough. We have to get in a very specific position and hold on really tight, because we could bounce and skid, and so Phil has to have two hands. We're gonna have to put the camera away for landing. We'll see you on the ground. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> that was bumpy. Yeah, um, nice smile. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, baby. Now, mommy. I didn't. Thanks, I'm cold. Thank you. Thank you guys had a big one. Landing was the coolest part. Said the landing, especially for people in our row, so mom, me, and him. Because they were, were in the bottom, so like, the ground one. It was as if we were the basket, and we just slammed into the ground. I had Colt in front of me, like I was holding him like this, and so when we hit, it slammed me back and onto my butt, but I'm good. I will survive, I'll recover from this. That was fun. Well, I think the big question is, are we gonna hot air balloon again, or is it one and done? Again and... You want to do it again? Not done. You know what I could see doing it in Morocco maybe? Oh, or um... Marrakech. Cappadocia. Yeah. yeah. Oh, a certificate! I graduated. Nice. Thank you very much. I graduated. Not I have another one. Awesome! This is a survival certificate. You have to be there in person to claim it. Nope. This is your first flight certificate, one of many, right? We've got a 45 minute drive back into the city for our next activity and we've got some hungry kids to feed. Finally, we've reached the point of the episode where we're going to explore the city of Dubai by sea. Our entire stay in Dubai and this boat trip in particular has been planned by our new friend Vicky. She's been a follower of our channel for a while, born in the Philippines, but has lived in Dubai for 13 years. So she is an expert of all experts. Vicky's gonna take us out on this really cool yellow boat so that we can enjoy the city skyline from a very unique perspective. And we're gonna be able to explore some of the buildings that we'd otherwise have to take cars, helicopters, or some other mode of transportation to, but we get to see them all in once. So all aboard, let's head out. She's right here! Vicky! Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for welcome, helping us plan all welcome. of it. Welcome, welcome. You are welcome anytime. Thank you. If Thank you come you. back again next time, I'm just here. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Hi! So, when, if people want to book the same trip that we're doing on the boat, yes. how do they contact you? They can contact me, I'll give you my phone number, mm -hmm. my email address, mm -hmm. and my social media account. We'll put that in the description. So, <laughs> contact me anytime, 
anything you want to do in Dubai, you want to do any tours, uh, you can contact me. I can arrange it for you. VIP. VIP. <laughs> that's what I feel like we've been getting with her. And I am so, so, so excited about all the other activities we're doing too. I'm most excited to see the Seven Star Hotel. Come through. We're starting here at Marina The Walk and we are going to see places like Atlantis, the Seven Star Hotel, the Palm, things that we're really excited to see. And with this being our very first day, we're getting a lay of the land. Sorry, we're expecting it to be, sorry, oh, sorry. life vest, thank you. Yeah. For yourself, your left arm uh -huh. over your head. Okay. And a strap on your body. Perfect. And a strap on your body. Okay. We're expecting some of this to be pretty fast and pretty windy. So let's get the hair out of the way. Guy. And our captain is Maximo at the back. And this is a group tour. It's going to be 99 minutes. And we have our guy, Gio, and our captain is Maximo. They're going to take good care of us. We're going to be going slow as we get out of the marina, but you can really see how big the walk is around the marina. And there's tons of shops, restaurants, and I feel like if we were to live in Dubai, this seems like our vibe here. It's like the most cliche tourism thing ever to talk about living in every place that you visit, but it's also unavoidable because places like this especially, it's, it's already beautiful and they've got pretty much everything you could ever want, so it's hard to not think about buying a place here. Plus, we know some people who live here and they, they love it, absolutely love it. 20 years ago, this whole area was nothing and everything's really been built up uh, in about five years. Also, there's a wire, a couple of wires up there goes from that tall, tall building over there all the way down ending where we started at the marina and that's a zip line and our guide says it's pretty expensive but wouldn't have that been so cool if we'd known about that we probably would have taken that as our mode of transportation to get here. We're about to go fast and I'm probably about to throw up because I get motion sickness every single time I go on a boat and I throw up every single time I go on a boat. Every single time. Yeah but worth it every time. This is Blue Water Island. It's a man-made island, and we're about to go really fast. And our next stop, Atlantis. Look, I've seen that on YouTube. It's like a giant water park. It's got a huge slide on top. It's the largest in the world. Atlantis is a hotel brand, and this is the largest in the world, and I think I heard him say that it cost over $500 million to build. It was built by a South African who also built the brand One and Only, which is a gorgeous hotel chain. Its theme is after the lost city of Atlantis. And now we're off to Burj Al Arab. It's remarkably quiet. Got two outboard Suzuki engines back there, and I think just because the uh, captain's helm is in between us, it blocks a lot of the noise. So it's really pleasant on here, especially with the breeze. It keeps you cool, quiet. This is Burj Al Arab, one of the coolest hotels in the entire world. A funny story, about 15 years ago, they emailed my agency about doing a website for them. We replied, never heard back after that. So I don't know what happened, but really cool because at least 200 all sweet rooms inside, so much gold plating. Speaking of gold, they have gold martini glasses that are used to serve the most expensive cocktail in the world, about 8,000 US dollars. If you look at the very top, you'll see the long strip of glass. That's the restaurant and probably the bar where you get the cocktail, right? And it's got a man-made land bridge that goes out, which is how you would drive probably in your Rolls Royce or your Maybach or whatever from the mainland to get out to the hotel. It's probably the main way to get to the hotel unless you take a helicopter and on the side you can see sticking out, that's the helicopter landing pad. It looks like a little spaceship. Skydiving is really huge here and the two planes that were right behind me there are called Twin Otters and it's the best skydiving plane on the planet, hands down. It's what they use at the Air Force Academy. Everybody uses them if you want to do serious skydiving. I don't think we've seen any fewer than about 100 skydivers just since we started this little boat trip. It is interesting to me that you start right here in the marina and end right here in the marina versus like landing and 
and flying out of some area in the middle of the desert, honestly. No, Phil's the only one who's been skydiving. I haven't been, of course the kids haven't been, and I think that Dubai would be the only place that I would be willing to do it. I know that Brooklyn would love to do it someday. I can totally see her skydiving. Yeah, exactly. Especially if she goes to the Air Force Academy. Yeah, She's yeah. been thinking about yeah. that. I think the Dubai skyline is probably my favorite skyline in the world, and it might be replacing Manhattan. I have to say that Gio is a fantastic photographer. Every time we stopped at one of these landmarks, he would take everybody's picture and they look awesome. So if you want to see his work, then you should follow us on Instagram. That's the end of our tour, but Vicky's here waiting for us. That was a really great way to see those landmarks because if you were in a car, it would take hours and hours and hours to drive and go to each one of them because you don't realize how big and spread out Dubai really is. It can be really far from one place to another, but by boat, that was only 99 minutes and we got to see it all. When I imagined coming out to UAE, I pictured us going to the desert, getting immersed in the culture, learning about the history, having fun in the dunes and camels, and all these things are running through my mind and I cannot wait to have this experience. Our driver's on their way and it's all one package deal. So from the moment we're picked up to the moment we're dropped off, we got this booked through our new friend Vicky and we're using Citron Tourism. We're gonna leave the link and the info that you need if you wanna book this exact experience in the description. I'm excited to meet our like safari driver. I already know his name, his name is Noor. Well, I'm excited to meet Noor. You're Noor? Yes. Can, you, can I say hi to you oh, on camera? Hi, hi. hi. Noor, I'm Phil. Hi. Pleasure, great, great. Let's go? Yes. Yeah. All right. Okay. Our first activity is going to be dune dashing. None of us have done that before. And Noor says that it's about a 45 minute drive out of town, so we're just going to sit back, relax, and enjoy the ride. Until the new ride! That one looks like, like more of a female head, but that one looks more of a so we're gonna hang out here for just a little bit and enjoy the atmosphere, but we are in the Emirate and the city of Sharjah, which is a little bit unique for the UAE because this particular Emirate does not allow the sale or consumption of alcohol at all. Well, technically if you had a license, but I think that's very, very rare. And that's due primarily to the large Muslim population that they have here. And because of that, it attracts a lot of Islamic tourists. Do you put, also put names on these? One side in Arabic and one side in English. 80 dirham for that bracelet right there. As soon as we arrive, Colt can't get away from this vendor that is selling uh, necklaces and bracelets and rings uh, to have your name engraved in Arabic. And he's been really into gold chains lately and wanting to collect them a little bit. So this can add to that. Uh, but I love that they are thinking about souvenirs. Um, so they spend their own money on souvenirs and I love that this is the kind of thing that they want to get and they can keep with them for a very long time. And they'll always remember this trip. What are you getting on the necklace? I'm getting my name in Arabic engraved on a bracelet. He even negotiated a lower price and he got it for 70, which is maybe 25 USD? No, 20. 20? 20 USD. Arabic, right there. Tell Dad why you wanted it. Because it looks like a military thing, but I don't actually know my blood type, so I just got plain. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of falcon is this? Yeah, this is a falcon you and I should know about. This is so cool. Hello. His talents are strong enough, he could probably carry a dog. Probably. No way. <laughs> oh, he just pooped. No, he didn't. <laughs> oh, oh my gosh, bro. You wanna hold it? Uh, sure. He's heavier than I thought he would be. <laughs> he's so heavy. He's like he's not heavy, it's more like it's more like he's like heavier than I thought he would be. What would you rather have a cat uh, or a, a cat. falcon? Uh, over any pet, a cat. Ah! <laughs> it's time for the dune bashing! And we're gonna be in the same vehicle that we drove from our hotel out to here in. It's a Toyota Land Cruiser. Oh my god, we're gonna get run over. <laughs> Woo, that was a close call. So, Noor says.
says that he has never had a, a doom bashing incident where he's flipped the car. So we've got a good track record so far and I, I hope he doesn't start today. But it is rigged, that car, to roll, bar. roll, roll bars. Cage. Yeah, so Phil full says it. A full what? Roll cage. The cars all have full roll cages. So you would be safe-ish, protected, if it did roll over. We're all pretty excited back here. Right, guys? Yeah. Yeah. We're going to get the prime spot because the AC is blowing right in her face. Okay, we're going. We're gonna race. driving. This is a lot more intense than I expected. He's doing such a great job. Yeah, it was, the music's it's actually loud. really, really fun. Honestly, I really, really like it, but I'm getting a little car sick. Okay, okay. All right. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> there were a few moments I was a little nervous. The car in front of us looked like it went on two wheels. I thought, I really hope we're not going on two wheels, but yeah, Noor did a great job. It was a lot of fun, and it was like a wild ride. I was actually hoping for us to like roll over. <laughs> you were hoping for that? Uh -huh. That's like all I was thinking, please don't roll over. I do think we have to check in on Cole. He gets car sick when you're doing a normal kind of drive, so something like this, probably taking a little bit of a toll. Come here, buddy. Not well, I get really ocean sick, because I mean, I throw up just from riding on boats, so. How are you doing right now? Pretty good. I'm not going to throw up now that we stopped, but it was not a good experience for the sickness part, but a great experience for the whole swerving and not falling over and dying part. That was pretty nice. Nor pulled a goodie out of his bag for the kids to play with. We can do all this here. Yeah. Ready? Yeah. Yep. I don't think we're half as good at sandboarding as Nora is at driving. Too much friction. Whoa. That was a pretty phenomenal day here in Dubai. But I gotta say, after that experience last night with the dune bashing, my neck is more than a little bit sore this morning. But we are catching our rental car right here and we're gonna head off now. We're going to Abu Dhabi for the next two nights. And even that's not gonna be the end of our travels through the UAE. Goodbye, Burj Khalifa. So much of our travel lifestyle is fueled by our favorite credit cards. From Centurion Lounge access from our American Express Platinum cards. To premier qualifying points through our United Club Infinite card. Across our collection of cards, we earn everything from free room upgrades at luxury resorts. To business and first class seats and awards flights around the globe. And and these cards are just one of dozens of cool products that make up the new Stuff We Love collection on our website. Stuff We Love is a constantly updated curation of our favorite things across categories like experiences and adventures, travel clubs and travel gear, health and beauty, travel-friendly financial offerings, items for your home, and more. To learn more about our favorite credit cards, go to followabc.com slash credit cards. Or go to followabc.com slash Stuff We Love to see all the things that help us travel comfortably and live a life of adventure. Adventure. We're staying at our second of three Anantara hotels on this trip, and this one is the Eastern Mangroves in Abu Dhabi. It is gorgeous, and we have two suites that are connecting, and we're paying $160 per room per night, which for us, a family of four, is a bargain to have that space and 
the ease of a luxury five-star resort is key. We're always looking for those amazing deals. So if you want to learn more about Anantara, we have a spot for that on our website at followabc.com slash Anantara. And you're going to want to see our next resort. It's absolutely insane. We're waiting for our rental car because we're going to head out and drive to the Grand Mosque. And our car's here. Phil's the driver. I'm always the passenger. I like it that way. I like this rental car. It's very convenient. It's a Volkswagen something or other. We don't have them in the States, so I'm not familiar with the model, but it's been serving us really well. Probably got about five hours on this thing already. All right, Navigator. Where do we go? Okay, so we're going to come out here and make a right. One great thing about the Sheikh Zayed Grand Mosque is that even if you don't know your way around Abu Dhabi, there's absolutely no way you can miss it. We just parked in the underground parking garage and when you come in through the entrance, you're basically in a little underground shopping mall right here. And that's perfect for us because even though we are very excited about seeing the mosque, there's one little problem, we are not dressed appropriately. So we need to find some appropriate attire. And I think this is a pretty good place right here. We did some research and we knew ahead of time that we could buy our garb before we go into the mosque. So in a sense, we came prepared. So this is the area they're gonna have something for Phil, something for me, something for Quotabo, and something for Brooklyn too. The rules essentially to go into the Grand Mosque, even to be outside on the grounds, you need to have uh, covered legs, covered arms, and the women's abaya is what they're called. Their outfit um, comes with a little hood so that can cover your hair. I really love this green color. Ooh, and this has jewels, but it's not the most basic. Try it on to see if we're on to the right size. I forgot I had my hat on. <laughs> what do you think of pink? Coral. Coral. Yeah, size is okay. Size is okay? Mm -hmm. All right, I think okay. I found mine. I changed my mind, I'm going with gray. Colt next? Yes. Colt wants to be next. I'm excited. Yeah? Oh, it feels kind of small. It feels good once it's on, yeah. but it feels small to put it on. I like it, bud. Here, here's the mirror. See? Is it good? Brooklyn wants to go with green, and this is a beautiful emerald green, and it's bedazzled. And it reminds me of that sari she wore when we were in India. We were just outside Jaipur. Apparently adults have to go into the room to take their shirts off, so... Voila! I'm gonna get a, a, a go. Now you're looking? Chef. I love it! Go ahead, please. Be my guest. Wow! I look like a... Sheik? A sheik! A sheik, but a, an Arabian man. Yeah. A man of business. A man. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> he cracks me up. He is soaking up the culture. We're ready to go. I already checked out. Let's go see this mosque. Some people have described it as the most beautiful building they have ever seen. And we've seen the Taj Mahal, so I'm excited. We'll have to compare. The entrance seems to be right over this way. It looks like there's a little bit of a registration process. I think we have a QR code we need to scan and then we should be able to get in. Even though we have to fill out some information, it's free to be on the grounds and to go inside the mosque. We are all registered, and now Brooklyn and I have to cover our hair. Some of the rules going in, I see right away, no sharing affection, right? You're not allowed to have a flag of a different country inside the mosque. No masks, eye coverings. Yeah. What about sunglasses outside? Okay. Sunglasses okay outside. And then the toys, no toys? No toys No teddy bears. No teddy bears. <laughs> Family members can hold hands with their children because you got to keep them close. Kids have to be on their absolute best behavior. Understood, guys? That's no guys? tantrums. No temper tantrums. No. Some people, they come and they go and swim in the pool. So. No swimming in the, the reflecting, pool. The reflecting Where pools. Where with yeah. the hands? Oh, oh yeah, no oh. hand gestures. Phil thought that one sign was no temper tantrums. I think they could use a little work on that visually because of the no swimming. There's no indication of water. The mosque was built between 1994 and 2007, and it got its name because Sheikh Zayed bin Sultan Al Nayan, the late founding father of the UAE, envisioned the creation of an epic cultural destination that would inspire people from all backgrounds. But it's also a fitting name because he was buried here after his death in 2000. Even the mosque's design and construction was multicultural. It included artists and teams from all over the world. And the open door policy is just one of many examples of UAE's culture of open dialogue. It's the polar opposite of how many Westerners view Arab culture. In addition to welcoming countless visitors like us who come just to gawk at the beauty of the complex, 
it's still an active mosque that accommodates about 50,000 worshippers daily. The courtyard's sprawling marble mosaic artwork and pools reflect the many jewel-embedded columns that line the structure, and the four trademark minarets each stand 106 meters tall, or about 350 feet. And as beautiful as this complex is, the elaborate lighting highlights an even more incredible setting after dark. But we can't stay that long because Colt wants to visit another site that's really close by. Earlier today, I was actually searching for other places we could go here in UAE, and I came across a place called Wahat al Karama, and I thought it'd be super cool to go here because it was right here next to the Grand Mosque. Wahat al Karama is a permanent tribute to UAE's brave soldiers and other Emiratis who made the ultimate sacrifice while serving the nation. In the English translation, it's the Oasis of Dignity. And I am so proud of this kid because when we told him our itinerary, what we're doing, he said, that's not enough. I want to see more. We got to get the most out of this trip as possible because he realizes that this is what? A once in a lifetime opportunity. And we said, go for it, do your research, tell us what you want to see, and he found this memorial. Cole, what do you think the design of the structure represents? I think it represents stability, because it looks like some of the structures are falling down and the others are holding them up. That's super wise, good observation. But yeah, they are kind of like leaning against each other, holding each other up, but all kind of fallen, but, but also stable together, so that's, really cool observation from an 11 year old. We're all getting pretty hungry, which is perfect timing because we're about to go and see the most iconic food bite in this country. We're at the Abu Dhabi Dates Market, and obviously they have a lot more than just dates. There's nuts and other fruits and other little goodies, but the dates themselves are really important to this culture and the religion here. And we told the kids that as long as it's healthy, that they can pick out and eat whatever they want. Brooklyn already wants some raisins in here. Mmm, got some candied dates. Dry dates, yellow, yeah, dry strawberries. These all look delicious, and look how many different kinds of raisins they have. Green raisins, black raisins, amber raisins or yellow raisins, dried cranberries, dried pomelo, kiwi. I've never had a dried kiwi. I've, I don't even know if I've had a dried strawberry, honestly. Dried ginger, figs, oranges. One of everything. Can I have one of everything? Ooh, those dried strawberries really do look super interesting. So I'm looking at some nuts and some dry things. I think I'm gonna get some dried pineapple, of course, and some pistachios and peanuts. But here's the real question. Which peanuts should I get? Should I get the normal peanuts, these peanuts that are still in their shells, or these peanuts? By peanuts, he means cashew. Wait, these are cashews? Yeah. Okay, hmm. cashews, mm -hmm. peanuts, uh, seasoned peanuts. Seasoned cashews. Seasoned cashews. I'm just here for the I dates. Actually do not have so there are so many different varieties of dates, and these are from Saudi Arabia. They look a little bit more yellowish and golden, and these darker, juicier looking ones are from Jordan. And there's even more variety over here. So they have a local UAE date, and that's this one. It looks like more different than any of the other ones with that smooth skin. Mejdul is, I think, the variety, but they're from different areas. Like up here is from Palestine. Uh, these are from Jordan. And we were talking about the ones from UAE. They believe that there are all kinds of medicinal properties to dates, and in the Muslim community, they have a quote saying, indeed, in dates, there is a cure. A few examples of that, by the way. Lowers cholesterol, rich in protein, vitamins, bone health, nervous system, promotes digestion, improves skin, and fixes hangovers, Brooklyn. You hear that? Hangovers. Can we get one of those and one of those? Total for all this is 10 dirham, which is, I believe, $2.50, yeah, approximately-ish. We're gonna step out here and try them because it's, ooh, I, it's a very dangerous step. It's really good, it tastes like strawberry sorbet. Well, why don't you try one of yours? Oh. Yeah, I'm gonna try some of my nuts. Mmm, tastes like, it's a little bit spicy. It tastes like a spicy pizza. Oh, can I try one? Yeah, the seasoning's really subtle. That peanut cashew really comes through. Those are good. I can snack on those all day long. But instead, Phil and I are gonna snack on these. You know what, first, I wanna tell you where we are. We're close to the water. We're at the Zayed port, and we're also really close to the Abu Dhabi Louvre. 
and we really wanted to go there and see it, but they are closed on Mondays and we just so happened to be here our only full day in Abu Dhabi on a Monday. So if we're gonna miss it, but if you come to Abu Dhabi, you've gotta visit their Louvre here. I'm gonna start with the one from Saudi Arabia. Wow, okay. Mm. All right, I'll try it too, but I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna do the whole thing. Mm. Juicy little sucker. A bit of a skin on the outside. Easy, easy to bite through though. So gooey on the inside, look at that. It's so soft and sweet, it's almost caramely. And that's what's cool about dates. There's like such a wide variety of flavors. Some are really soft, some are really, uh, some are really soft, some are really firm, some are sweet, some are nutty. I'm glad that you said it was caramely because I was thinking it was really sweet and I couldn't put my finger on what I was thinking of. And I think you're right, caramely is a good way to describe it. So next one we're gonna do is from Jordan. Mmm, I might like this one a little bit better because it's not quite as sweet. This one tastes, I think, a lot like a fig. Yeah, I like this one a lot. There's like, um, the skin, I think, is a tiny bit more bitter, which makes it balanced out because the sweetness inside, it's still sweet. The next one I'm gonna try is the, what was it, Majdul? Majdul, I think. Uh, and this one's from UAE. So these are grown right here. Very small compared to the other ones. Not as wrinkly. It's got quite a skin, and uh, it's easier to touch without getting your fingers all sticky. So stinking different. This one almost tastes a little bit chocolatey. It's not as sticky, it's almost got a consistency like chewing gum. And it has a teeny tiny pit. That's all there is to it, it looks like a seed. Still a lot of caramel, but I feel like I get maybe some coffee notes in there, which I know everybody's gonna be like, how do you know you never drink coffee? Because I've never had a cup of coffee in my life or a sip of coffee in my entire life. He has had plenty of espresso martinis though. Mmm. I'm like biting into it, I didn't even get all the way through. It tastes like it's hollow inside. I mean, it feels, it, I shouldn't say taste, it feels like it's hollow inside. So different. And this one is even less sweet, I think, than the others. I'm gonna try one of Brooklyn's dried kiwi. It's so green, it seems like that can't possibly be real. You wanna try half? Okay. Oh, thank you. Never mind, you can eat the whole thing. I mean, it looks like candy, honestly. I gotta be honest with you, it doesn't have a whole lot of flavor at all, let alone kiwi flavor. It just tastes sugary, but not like candy. Tastes like... Sweet broccoli. Sounds healthy. All right, I am still hungry. Let's go find some more things to eat. One of the great things about the dates market is that you can sample as many as you like before you buy because you want to know what you like first. And we're at a new store, and this is a new one for us to sample. It's Adwa, or it's from Adwa City in Saudi, and it looks like a giant raisin or probably a prune. Brooklyn would probably make a joke about it being like me because it's so old and new. Sad but true. Mmm. So this is like much tougher. Hey, you look like that. <laughs> Anyways, back to the date. This is a lot chewier, a lot tougher than the other ones we had. He also just gave us this one, which is a chocolate date with pistachio, or pistachio as I like to say it, because that's how they pronounce it in Italy. Does this one still have a pit inside? No pit? No pit in the chocolate covered ones, because that would make it too tough to eat. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, that's my kind of candy. I'm trying to figure out what they're doing with the pistachio. And I think it's like chopped up and then stuck inside of the date and then covered in chocolate. So it's real pistachio in there. It's a phenomenal combination of flavors, honestly. Speaking of pistachios, Cole's dying to try some pistachios. Literally, I'm gonna die if I can't try them. <laughs> wonder, so let's get like a, that looks like saffron. a little bag. Yeah, the yellow makes me think that maybe there's a special flavor to it, maybe saffron. And also, we have been wanting to get more cinnamon sticks. And what better place than when you're on a trip to get something like a local delicacy like the cinnamon here. Um, Phil likes to use the cinnamon sticks to shave off over cocktails. So it's not saffron at all that makes it yellow. It's got a paprika special flavoring to it. And the shell is spicy. Mm -hmm. Really spicy. You can get really good prices on spices here. Saffron is ridiculously expensive in the U.S. <laughs> but while he's opening that one, let me show you. We have all these different sizes up here. Here's one. Those are 30 durham each. So that is what, like uh, a little more than five, six, seven dollars? Seven dollars? And then here's one. Look how big that is. Here, you can look at this one, sweetheart. That one's 60 durham. This one's 140 durham, but look at that. It's like a golf ball. What's your favorite date? 
one. This one? Yeah. Okay, let's try one of your favorites, please. Can I try one of those? Big suckers. This is like getting in a raw oyster and getting the huge one. So it's not too sticky on the outside, as you can tell, because it has kind of that matte finish, almost like it was rubbed in, uh, I don't know, some sort of powder. Mmm. This one is hollow in the middle, if you look in there. So it's fun to bite into, because even though it's huge, it has air on the inside, so it's, it's not too hard to get through. It's really good flavor. I feel like I get caramel in every single one of them. I never knew how much I would love dates. I don't think I've ever eaten a date until today because they always kind of creep me out. It's like, it's a raisin, but it's huge. Again, kind of like the raw oyster. I like the little ones, not the big ones. But it is so delicious, so fun to eat. That might be my favorite now, too. You gonna try it? Um, ooh, that's good. Tastes like a banana, definitely a banana, and I don't know. Thank you. Thank you so much. Come with Let's check out one more store. We want to try more dates, but we also want to do something different. And these kind of look like dessert or donuts. They look like donuts because some of them look like they have frosting on top and then all these little sprinkle types of things. So they look really exotic. I, mean, I can't even tell what some of this stuff is. It looks like rose petals on top of one. There's nuts on top of another, plenty with pistachio. Some look like they have granola on there. Some are stuffed with like cherries or something. I mean, these look super exotic and very delicious. And I don't know what to try first. I think, um, you know what? My favorite, probably cashew. Mmm. Mmm. I love two things about this already. One, they've taken the pit out. And two, the crunch of the cashew, instead of getting that like unedible pit, is awesome. I love when you add salt to something sweet. It just takes it to the next level. Like, have you ever heard of people putting salt in hot chocolate? Or chocolate milk. Or chocolate milk? It's a thing. Well, this is quite a tough decision because so, these really look good. Uh, so there's one that seems to be stuffed with two dried cherries. I wanted to try the dried cherries that were in there too, so I could go that route. Here's another one that's stuffed with pistachios. It's just not covered in chocolate. Uh, I'm not gonna do that one because it's a little too similar to the one I already had. And then here's another one that's stuffed with cashews, but it looks like it also has maybe a white chocolate of some sort on it. And lastly, we've got one that seems to be covered in the same white chocolate type of stuff and then covered in pistachios. This one looks the best, but again, since I already had one with pistachios, I'm gonna go with a cashew. I'm gonna do half of it. I can't quite tell if it's frosting or white chocolate. It tastes like a little bit of both. That's really good. It's really good. I'm gonna take the other bite with a cashew in there. All right, now I'm gonna try the one with cherries. So I'll do half of it because it's got two cherries in there. So dried cherries inside of a dried date. That tastes a lot like a chocolate covered cherry, which was a very popular candy from my childhood in the US. Although I haven't even seen one of those in decades. So I don't know if that's still really a thing out there. I'm really excited to try this one because uh, I like the cashew one so much and this is the pistachio. Not nearly as crunchy as the cashew. We're salty. I could hardly taste the pistachio at all. Colt's gonna try the last one, which looks like it is a uh, pistachio in white chocolate covering the date. Very chocolatey. Not super pistachio-y. I just get chocolate and date, which tastes exactly like chocolate mixed with date. It's pretty simple. Well, I'm glad we loaded up on some snacks. I had, I think, enough dates for a while now. We're gonna head back to our hotel and we cannot wait to show you the Anantara Eastern Mangrove Resort. We just left our car with valet. They're gonna park it because valet parking is included with our stay. Beautiful lobby in here and it smells so nice. They've got a nice little display water feature right before you go out, right past the lobby. It's the pool. And we're right on the edge of the mangroves. The pool does this infinity edge that looks like you're going right into the water there. And we have a beautiful view of the Abu Dhabi downtown skyline. And we see a lot of people kayak through here. And that's one thing, if we had one more day, we would venture into the mangrove park and uh, check out the animals there, the kayaking, the activities that you could do there. I think our guest of honor has arrived, so we're gonna go meet up with her here in the lobby. Melanie is a follower and a new friend of ours. She's been so helpful with our trip out here. We really love getting advice from people when they learn that we're gonna be visiting their country. It means a lot to get some shared information and get the pro tips. In the flesh. <laughs> nice to oh, my meet favorite you. family on YouTube. Oh you. my goodness, welcome. It's marhaba. It's the Arabic word for welcome. 
finally you've reached the, this part of the planet. Yes, and now exposed to Arabic culture, way of life. And we're already in love with it. Oh, it's so, so cool glad. Here. I've been in love with this place for 20 years now. So 20 years ago is when you moved here from Philippines? From the Philippines, yeah. yes. So we're going to visit with Melanie for a little bit. See you. We've left Abu Dhabi, the city, not the emirate. And we are going to the very edge of the Abu Dhabi emirate in the middle of the desert for the experience that we are most excited about on this trip. It's another Anantara resort, and it's not a typical resort where you just stay there and you go and venture out. The resort is the experience, and I can't wait to see it. We've just passed through the main security gate, and now we've still got about a 10 minute drive just to get to the main resort. And he gave us some really good advice at the gate saying, number one, watch out for wildlife because there can literally be camels just crossing the street here. And number two, do not stop in the sand because it's so soft, we will get stuck. Unlike our dune bashing experience, this car is not really cut out for that sort of thing, so we've got to be careful. It is stunningly beautiful here. I mean, who would think that something as barren as just sand dunes everywhere the eye can see would be this cool? But when you see it in person, the colors are just gorgeous. And you actually do get a little bit of pop of green because they do such a good job of keeping some of the vegetation well irrigated. See it yet, Anantara? Look at, look at the dunes up ahead, buddy. Oh, they're so big. Look at this dry lake bed. Welcome to Palace. Talk about a grand entrance. And this resort is gorgeous and it just looks like a castle and a palace in the middle of the desert. And we're checking in and they brought a little welcome drink for us. What's in this? It's got rosemary, pomegranate, and and fig in it. I like that rosemary scent the most. And we also have some dates. As if we haven't had enough dates yet. Are these local or? Yes, it's local. These are local dates from the Emirates. The dates are delicious. Mm. Yeah. Our room is ready and they're bringing a little buggy. We're ready to go. I'm just so happy to be here. Thank you. Very close to main building. We have one big beautiful suite and the entrance goes right into the living room where the kids are sleeping. They're gonna bring in an extra trundle bed so that they're gonna fit beautifully in here. In the back of the living room, they have a little kitchenette. So a sink, the coffee and tea area, a little bar, and uh, oh, plenty of water, because you need to hydrate in the desert. It also opens up to the front of the unit, so if staff needs to come in and put anything in the kitchen, they can do that without disturbing you. And then this master is beautiful. It's a big king size bed and there's another big TV just for the parents and their own doors to the balcony. We're gonna go out there in a second. There's an additional little mini bar in here. So refrigerator and a desk there if anybody wants to get work done, but you're really here for vacation. We're the only ones working, because we're filming. This bathroom is so beautiful. I just can't imagine how much water it would take to fill up that tub. It's massive. And they have a little private toilet area with a bidet, and a shower, and two sinks, and this closet over next to the sinks, that opens up to the closet that's in the master. So it opens on both sides. Now let's step outside. I mean, there's nothing but desert out there. It took us two and a half hours to drive here. At, uh, two and a half hours of nothing. Just sand and the dunes. And the master patio is connected to the living room patio so you can come out, but then also there's a little bit of privacy and separation between each of the little grass areas. And we're up a little bit higher so we have a really great view of the resort. And the main pool just below the lobby, the kids are dying to get in, so let's get our suits on. 
This is the main pool area. It's the biggest pool at the resort. They have like a little, little kid area, a place where you can wade into the water, and they've got swings right by the bar behind me. We passed an adults only pool on the way down that's really spectacular. Huge infinity edge overlooking the sand dunes. Incredible views. I think we would prefer to be there, but uh, with the kids with us, I just don't think it really makes a whole lot of sense. But I'm gonna have a cocktail. I think we're gonna grab a bite to eat. Really cool off in the water. And then we've got a cool adventure that we have to get ready for. What else should we do in the desert? We're going camel trekking. And we are even further in the middle of the desert than we thought possible. We had to drive even further away from the resort where these camels are waiting for us. Cliff, can you pick one? Can I get on this one? Can I get on this one? I'm fine with that. I'm gonna name mine Curvy because his ears are curved back and I'm not sure why. I wonder if all camels have it. Not all of them have it. Alright. Grumpy. Alright, Brooklyn, if you're ready. Ready? There you go, buddy. It's so tall. Okay, Brooklyn. What did you name yours? Uh, this one is Lashes. The camels that we're riding on today are single hump. I know they look like really lumpy bumpy on top, but it's really just one lump that's right in front of where we're sitting on the back seat. So they're called dromedary camels. And a lot of people also think that the hump is full of water. It's where the camels store water, but that is totally not true. Robbie, our guide, tells us that it's actually full of fat. And the reason that it's fat in there is so that they can use it for additional survival because with the three stomachs that these camels have, they can hold hundreds of liters of water inside of their bodies. But if they run out of water and food, the fat alone can be used as a fuel source for an additional four to five days. We're giving the camels a little bathroom break. So is yours, Dad. It's like when you take like a 45 minute toilet break. You get like your Austin Powers camel back. Don't look at Yeah. yeah. Oh. It's done now. Okay. now it's our turn to take a break. It's a sunset break, but we're not resting much. Uh, the kids love playing in the sand dunes. So Robbie, our guide, is going to take us up this ridge and the kids can play and roll. And he says that we can like shuffle our feet and it'll make like an avalanche, a sand avalanche sound. It's so beautiful up here. And if you look far into the distance, you can see all of these like white or very light gray areas that are flat on the lowlands. And those, Robbie says, thousands of years ago used to be saltwater lakes. And this is the largest sand desert in the world. Sahara's a bigger desert, but it's not all sand. I love this world. Everywhere we go, it is a wonder. Now we're gonna try to make this avalanche happen. So guys, do you remember Robbie said, you stomp your feet and like smish it as you go and we go together at the same time, okay? okay stomp, stomp. <laughs> as he goes. At least she stayed on her feet. All right, let's see if Phil and I can stand up the rest of the way down too. You can feel the vibration under your feet. Woo, cold avalanche coming, watch out. Woo. Our current travel mentality as a family is to always experience places off the beaten path. And I think we did a really good job of that here in Abu Dhabi. This is another incredible adventure in a totally new place for us in the world. And we are so full of gratitude and gratitude for you for watching us. So thank you so much for following us along. It means so much to us. Please leave a comment, let us know what you think and tell us where you think we should be going next. We are trying to hit all seven continents this year. So one down, six more to go. Well, that's it for today. Thank you for watching and make sure to subscribe. See you in the next episode. Now watch a sick whale jump. <laughs> that kid needs a bath. Speaking of off the beaten path, Robbie took us down to the actual lake bed here so that we could try this salt firsthand. Look at this. It's uh, just dried up salt. I'm gonna need to uh, no, no. dehydration. <laughs> So nice if you one, go like this. And you see that's that's all salt. Try it. Okay.
You love salt. It's good, right? <laughs> Tastes like salt. Come on, start collecting. <laughs> <laughs> so grab some of this one that's all, was made like crystals at the top. That's the more pure salt that's popped up. It's actually really hard. It's kind of like concrete, so you got to break it up just to get it. And there it is. Whew. That's salty salt. That's really good. So this is as sea salt as you can get for sea salt. Right from the source. Oh, what a cool thing. This is when the salt water starts to evaporate, the crust on the top starts to dry out and it makes like this quite crackling ground. So in the next couple of days, as you walk, it will start to crack. And this is the water level rising up and evaporating on the top of the surface. And you get this hard crackling salt surface. All you need is just the tiniest little bit. It's really delicious salt. I'm gonna take some, put it on my dinner tonight. <laughs>